If there is one thing that defines a grand design's self-builder, it is that they are prepared to move to the margins of society, to leave the comfort of solid ground and to leap into the unknown. Now, 25 years ago, in our very first episode, Tim and Jules did just that. They were the first to step up to the plate. Yeah. When's it due? Jo June, early June. So, I mean, surely though, I mean, you know, if you have the baby, it doesn't really matter where you're coming back home to, does it, after afterwards? Oh, it's being born at home, home birth. <laughs> it's going to be born yes, here. It's going to be born here. We this can, is uh, home. This we will can be home. The spot it's going to be like. born <laughs> in, in the dumper, probably. The plot cost 86, and the house is going to cost around about 60, 70, I think, 1,000. Right, and that includes decoration? No. Furniture? No. Garden? <laughs> no, quite. Uh, decking? Decking, not quite. But R Roof? Yes, roof. Roof. It'll include the roof, electrics and plumbing, but basically that's just going to be the shell. I mean, the baby comes, you know, that, that, we know that's going to happen. What happens if the house is not ready? Is that going to matter? If it's finished in time, it would be wonderful. And if it isn't, then it's not as if we don't have anywhere to live. It would be quite possible for the baby to be born here. Um, but but I, Tim has his heart set on, on having the house finished and there isn't any reason at this stage why that shouldn't be so. It's the first day of work on site and there's already a problem. The building inspector's making this go down a, another half a metre into the clay. And so you've got foundations deep enough to uh, put a skyscraper now. And there's maybe signs of roots in there as well. And so uh, they may have to put some sort of uh, boarding to stop any root invasion in the foundation. Which could uh, cost about another 8,000 quid, they tell me. Just three days after the house arrived on the back of a lorry, it's up. With nine weeks to go until the baby is born, Tim and Jules are over budget by 4,000 pounds. However, they're on schedule, but building is never that simple. In here is a septic tank. It is, isn't it? It's uh, very rusty and <laughs> dirty. It's defunct, I'm afraid. And in here is all the decking. What? I can't afford to do both. I've got to revamp this or make a new one. Joking. And uh, the cost of the decking is going to pay for a new uh, sewage system, I'm afraid to say. It's really sad. It is sad, but there you are. Tim just didn't realise that his septic tank was unusable. A new tank is going to cost £4,000. On Tim's return, the new septic tank is going in. A solution there, but he's returned to more problems. The windows have been delivered, but they don't all fit. The reclaimed bricks arrive for the plinth walls and the chimneys. But even this doesn't go smoothly. One pallet load collapses, smashing 300 bricks, costing 70 pence each. And there aren't any brickers to lay the good ones either. By now, the relationship with unique homes is under strain. The real problem is that they're based in Bristol and are finding it hard to source and manage a local workforce. A whole week goes by without a single workman showing up, and it's up to Tim to fix it. Jules does finally have her baby at home. Unfortunately, it's the wrong home. She gave birth to a healthy baby boy, surrounded by her extended family. I'm very run down. I've got no money. I've bashed myself in the face on the mantelpiece. My Land Rover's head gasket is blown up. I've had about four hours sleep in as many weeks. Now, Our first ever Grand Designs house now has a rich and lush new setting, a forest that has flourished around it. It's full of curiosity and wonder and 25 years worth of stuff and life. It's beautiful. Yeah, I am well. How are you, Bax? Oh, well, older but no wiser. Just the oh, same. You're the you same. Know. That's the wonderful do thing. I, do you think so? In 25 years, they haven't changed a thing. The living room retains its warm, inviting charm. Everything's very much still here. 
This house is pretty unchanged, yet of course family life has softened the building's edges. Even the money-saving windows seem to have fitted in. Family photos and aging furniture serve as reminders of how this building has been a timber vessel in which so much life has happened. It sounds like Tiger, the baby who grew up alongside the house and its landscape, particularly benefited from Tim and Jules's wild forest creation. He's still at home, and at 26, he's a full-time paragliding instructor who also spends time raising a falcon. What do you see it as? What do you see the building as being responsible for for the last 25 years? Life, our life, setting our children up to cope with the things that they might encounter in their lives and having a blooming good time being here and being in the space and being with the family and being with each other. I agree with her. Good. <laughs> <laughs>